I'd like to thank our newest channel sponsor, A Plus Lift, for sending us this lift. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up, leave a comment telling us why. If you don't like this video, leave a thumbs down, leave a comment telling us why you don't like it. Hopefully this video helps you if you're thinking about installing a lift, shows you that it's not that big of a deal, and that if you're willing to put in a little time and work, you can have one too. If you're thinking about purchasing a lift, I'll leave a link in the description to this one. It's one of the most affordable lifts on Amazon and it has great reviews. I've had this for a little over a month and have used it to lift several vehicles and work on them and I've had nothing but good experiences so far. So check that out. Because my concrete was pre-existing and I didn't know the thickness or strength of it, I didn't feel confident enough to just go ahead and install the lift directly onto the concrete. So I worked with a structural engineer and we came up with a plan to cut out a square in my concrete and how deep I needed to dig down and how far I needed to key it in underneath the concrete to uh, be confident that I have a good solid foundation for my lift. You know, this is a 10,000 pound lift and I didn't want to take any chances. So with the help of a friend, we got to work right away and um, start preparing for concrete. Now, luckily, uh, my friend had a little bit of experience laying concrete, so he was able to help me with this. Um, it's not something I have done a whole lot of. If it's not something you feel confident in, definitely hire a professional. The lift came packaged up in a fairly small package, but make no mistake, this thing is heavy. It was all my tractor could do to lift this and put it into the garage. This can't be unloaded with a lift gate, so be prepared to either have a forklift or a tractor or something of that nature that can lift at least 2,000 pounds. Now you want to run over from here. Let's try it. If it looks like it's going to be too heavy, I'm going to slide this way. What are you doing, bro? You all right? I'm good. You can overlay. If you don't have a forklift or something inside where you can lift this up, be sure to have a few good strong friends there to help you lift it up. This is not light. It's very heavy gauge metal and it took all we had to get this thing lifted up. First thing you want to do is to get both posts lifted up and roughly in place on your footings. Once you get them both stood up, this is where you need to take a lot of time to make sure you get it exactly right per the instructions. You need this to be spaced exactly correct or the overhead portion will not fit. I need to be just under 134 and 38. Once you're confident the uprights are in the right position, then you can go ahead and drill for your anchors. Now these are large diameter holes into solid concrete, so you will need a heavy duty drill. Now because I've got the overhead model, I had to add these extensions. You can add them on the ground and then lift it up, but it's already heavy enough, so we decided to lift them up and then add the uh, extensions on afterwards. After the extensions are installed, you need to make the bridge that will carry the cables and the hydraulic hoses from one tower to the other. Now you want to be careful when putting the centerpiece on as it has a hook on it that needs to line up on the same side that has the other two hooks. And this is for the hydraulic hose to ride in as it goes across. You'll just lift this up and bolt it in place and this will take two people. Again, this could be put on the ground and then lifted up as one piece, but without a forklift, I didn't feel like I had a good way of doing that. Once everything was bolted together and we had a couple anchors in place just to hold it still, we turned our attention to the cables. Now, you need to follow the instructions very carefully on this to make sure the cables are routed correctly so they don't fray or anything of that nature.
You'll want to install two bolts into the top of the hydraulic pump and reservoir. That way you can slide it into the slots and it'll hold its own weight while you put the rest of the bolts in. If not, you'll be trying to hold this heavy <laughs> pump and put the bolts in at the same time. To install the arms, you just need to slide the pins in place and then there's a retainer clip on the bottom that you put on. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of work to get these lined up because it is a very tight fit, um, which it needs to be, but with a little bit of patience they go on pretty easy. After you've adjusted the cables properly, you can install this cover, which serves two purposes. One, it just makes it look better aesthetically, but two, if a cable does break, it gives you a little bit of dampening. The lift also comes with bumpers to protect your doors when you're opening up, because inevitably, when you've driven the car to where it needs to be for the lift, it's right in the way of the door. Installing the hydraulics is very simple. There are only two lines. You first have to install a T that comes right out of the pump and then from that T you have one line that goes down to the bottom of the post that the pump is on and another line that goes up and across the tray and down to the bottom of the post on the opposite side. These are flare joints so you don't have to add any Teflon or anything, you just tighten them up. The last step is to install the electrical. Now if you don't feel comfortable doing this, definitely hire a professional because this is 220 volt and it's nothing to play around with. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe.